particular line, cheap holidays and other people's misery, which is a very, for the sex you don't normally think of them as profound philosophers, but it's an incredible line. And I, there I was backpacking, see how li little I could live on. <laughs> that's, that's my fan club, that's my baby daughter, Cara. Um, and I suddenly realized that I'm just taking from the poorest people in the world, and that's what actually drove me to do medicine, because uh, then at least you're useful. And then listening to, to Father Richard about meaning, I've been incredibly lucky. I'm an obsessive. I get obsessed with what I do. And I've been very lucky just to fall into being obsessed about treating starvation. And their meaning has never been an issue. And I, I hadn't realized until actually talking to you how lucky I am because it's just, well, that's what I do and that's, that's my obsession. But actually, it's, it just gives me meaning, gives everything I, I do meaning. And actually, that's not what I'm going to talk about. But I just thought it's stimulated a lot of thought this today already. But my sort of epiphany, I didn't really know it was an epiphany, but um, my moment, aha moment, started in, um, it was 96. I had specialised in treating starvation. I was in famine after famine, war after war, in Liberia. And I, was, I caused a cholera epidemic, unfortunately. Um, a bad day at the office. <laughs> and I was horrified. I was meant to be good at what I did. And I had caused a cholera epidemic. And so I wanted to write about it. Because I thought, well, if I can do it, other people can do it. So I need to write about this. So I wrote an article which was pretty hard-hitting, you know, about what I'd done wrong, why it went wrong, and what you had to avoid. And I went to the NGO I was working with and wanted to publish it. And they said, you can't publish that. You can't publish how this NGO, I won't, I won't name them because they're actually quite a good NGO, um, how we've caused a cholera epidemic because that will ruin our funding base. You know, people don't want to see NGOs causing funding cholera epidemics <clears throat> and that got me think there's something wrong here because famine relief development anything it's a messy business we make mistakes all the time and if you can't shout about your mistakes as loudly as you shout about your successes you're going to have a, a very conservative you're going to fail to learn and grow and I, I then spent a few years doing evaluations of NGO and UN programs and every time he said something nice, they published it. Every time he said something critical, they, they shut it away. And it started me to really question the whole idea of charity. And I, I thought, you know, speaking at an alternative mass, I, I would talk a bit about charity and an alternative view. Now, I'm not saying charity is not good. Charity is essential. We have to have that benevolent feeling. But, but the role of charities in international development, particularly in my area of nutrition relief, I think is actually got out of kilter now. Poor people anywhere, they have a right to food, they have a right to health, they have a right to education. To fulfill a right is not charity. To fulfill a right is an obligation, it's a duty. And I think the focus on charity has, has been somewhat damaging because charity almost looks at the motivation of the giver. Aren't we, you know, we're doing this charitable work, which is great, I'm not against that. But people have a right to professional help. And so I was struggling with this for a few years. And then, I mean, that's really what led me to, to start these two organizations, Valid International, Valid Nutrition. And Valid Nutrition like, is a charity, but we don't aim to raise money through fundraising and through appealing to people's better nature. We aim to raise money through manufacturing quality nutritional products in developing countries, using local factories, local food technology, and local ingredients. And in so doing, what we're trying to do is to align the, the impact, the social impact of what we're doing with our revenue model. And I, that's what it's come, has come to my, my thinking, Scott, too. With, with the charity movement as it is, there is a disconnect between the way charities generate revenue, which is their websites, through their PR, through, you know, if you look at charities' websites, the world would appear to be a great place because they're all doing such brilliant work. But we know there's more hunger today than was 10 years ago. There's still 20 million children dying needlessly or risk of death needlessly from malnutrition. And a third of the developing world's children having their brains permanently damaged through a simple preventable condition called undernutrition. Now, it's not charity that's needed. It's actually business that aligns Giving those children the food they need. Look, look my little child there running around. Look. <laughs> See, she's just had, all she's had is just a little bit of quality food for the first two years, and now her brain's protected. That's what 
200 million children in the world don't get. And so, so we, where we've moved to now with our thinking with Valid Nutrition is to actually have a business approach where people have the choice. They can go to, to uh, their little local shops and they can buy, pe poor people buy food, majority of poor people buy food, but they don't have the choice to buy food that's good for their children's brains or the brands, the social brands to recognize what's good for them. So where we're at now is have a social business that aligns making profit out of se selling food to poor people, but giving them the choice to have the right food and the means to recognize it. And in so doing, once you're generating revenue, you have a sustainable way forward. And I think this model you will see a lot more of. There's a role for charity. You know, charities should be informing people of their entitlements, informing people what they want. But their role in service delivery, I think, is now too overexpanded. And so I think you'll see uh, in the next few years, and what I'm hoping, that social business, where whether it's in health, making mosquito nets, making vaccines or whatever, businesses generate their revenue from providing what poor people need and charities then fill in the pieces to allow people to, to effectively market those, to allow people to, to know what they need. And so that was my, where my epiphany, this, this causing a cholera epidemic, got me. Um, and I, it, it, well, in talking about meaning, it's been a very meaningful life and I hopefully this, this movement of, of social business will go on and, and actually really change the world. We, we have it in our means to actually end malnutrition. And in so doing, we can actually improve the economies of all the developing world and create economic growth for our own economy. And so it's, it's a no-brainer for me. So that's, that's the thought to end on. Charity is great, but poor people require, have, a, have a right to food, education, health, and that requires real engagement from business, not just charity.